What's up? I'm not dead. Let me tell you something about COVID. Uh, hmm, how do I say this? All right. You know how COVID has like millions of cases? It's like everybody's getting it. I thought for something so popular, it would be more fun. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> I don't, I don't get why it's popular at all. I, I wish I had never chosen to get it. it it's like, it's just, it's, there's no upside. Like, I, didn't, I, I don't know. It's like one of those movies where everyone seems to like it and I don't get it. I was like, what is the, all this is just me. Like, I can't, I can't breathe. I'm coughing a lot. <laughs> this, what, what's fun about this? I just, I didn't get it. I felt like totally, it was like the dune. It's the dune of viruses. <laughs> It is. I don't get it. It's not for me. I know everyone seems to love it. I know it's fucking more popular than ever. Dude, I felt crazy. I was walking around in public with no mask, obviously. And I was like, man, <laughs> everyone else <laughs> seems to love COVID. And I, I'm not getting it. I'm not enjoying it. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty well, man. I feel so good now. I have, I have two COVID stories I'm going to tell today. I have one story that I'm not sure I've even told. Or if I have, it was like my first month streaming. So no one's going to know it. I have a story from when COVID first appeared a sort of patient zero situation i got a COVID for that and then i have a story for when i actually got COVID this past uh week and a half two weeks so if you guys want to know how i got COVID, all right so i was spending my tuesday doing what most people do i dressed head to toe as heath ledger's the joker and i would go around to local grocery stores and i would point at everyone wearing a mask and i would say society you know and that's a normal thing to do and i've done that all throughout the pandemic at no problem and then i had this new thing where i would put on a mask and then i would say you know how i got these scars and i would take the mask off and the scars would line up with the with the straps of the mask and i would say wearing this and i was getting so close to people's faces when i do that i was getting so close to people's faces and eventually one guy just coughed he just coughed right in my face and i saluted him of course <laughs> obviously because he was doing God's work. And so I got the vid as, uh, as, as us vidders call it. Let me tell you something. Once you've had COVID, you're, you're, you see things a little bit differently. I don't, uh, you guys are like, let me use a term that's very cool. You're like muggles. <laughs> you're just not, you're not in the world like we are. All right. Do you understand that? Going to get COVID so I can become a Gryffindor. <laughs> It's not exactly how it works, but I like your, I like your attitude. When's the Slytherin strain coming up? Wait, let me tell I, okay, let me tell you two COVID stories. I got two COVID stories that are a sl slightly more real than the Joker one. The first one takes place at the very beginning of the pandemic. I want you guys to flash your minds back to 2020. The begin, like May, when is it, March? There's this thing, COVID coming out of China. There's only one or two cases over here. Was it 2019 or 2020? Fuck, COVID's been forever. So I had just started doing, um, basically the end of that last year and the beginning of 2020, I had gotten a trainer at my gym, this guy named Ben. And so I would go in like twice or three times a week and he would really can beat my ass because I really wanted to get fit. So I go in one day in March and I had been hearing the stuff on the news about COVID, COVID's in China, it might come over here. There's a few confirmed cases in America, blah, blah, blah. This is the very beginning. Like Tom Hanks maybe just had gotten it and they were starting to talk about lockdowns. So I go in for training and this guy, Ben, is like, hey, I got something different for you today. I got something different for your ass today. And I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> fine, whatever. I'm here to train. What, what how are going to be? He's like, come out back. Now we never go out back. In general, I always work out in the gym. He's like, no, we're going to go out in the backyard of the gym. <laughs> okay, why? He has set up in the backyard of the gym a f obstacle course. Like, I have to flip a tire. I have to push a thing. I got to jump over a thing. I got to do pull-ups. And then there's like, at the very end of it was this thing called the f pit shark. He called it the pit shark. I don't even remember. I, in my mind, it's like a torture device. I only did it this one time, so I can barely even remember it now. But it was essentially like I had to put two chains on each arm and like squat this giant thing around me and carry it. I don't know. I'm like, oh, so I have, to do, I have to do this? And he's like, no, 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 no. You have to do this over and over again for the whole session. <laughs> so it's like 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, you understand that I'm a gamer. <laughs> do you have any like light jazzer size? I could like, you understand that I'm a video gamer. Like I don't, I am, I, first of all, I'm 6,000 years old. Secondly, I play mostly video games. Like I pay you so that you can make me do light exercise and then tell me I'm doing a good job. That's why I want a trainer. I don't want actual hard classes. And But Ben was fired up. Ben Ben had been really working on this thing. And so he's like, no, you're gonna do this. And I have this thing, because I come from a military family. It's one of the reasons I, I spent the money on this trainer to begin with, is like, I work out a lot more when someone's yelling at me. <laughs> like, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
I don't know why. I don't know why that motivates me so much, but I can't I can't stop. It's like it's really weird. Like if it's by myself, I will quit easy. But when somebody goes like, let's go, let's go. Come on, keep it going. I, I don't I don't know what it is, but I, I can't stop. So that's why I did it. And so he takes out his stopwatch. He's like, all right, you're going to do as many of these as you can in 20 minutes. We're going to take a quick break and then 20, 20 minutes more. And he starts the timer and I'm going and I'm fucking lifting and I'm running and I'm pushing and I'm flipping the tire. And every time I try to slow down, he's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I just don't, my brain is like, fuck, I can't let him down. I can't let him down. I can't stop. Not bad. I can't let him down. So I keep going. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I get to the pit shark. The pit shark almost breaks my legs. I'm squatting the pit shark and I want to cry. But I do it. I do the whole thing. 20 minutes. I'm 100% dead. I, I, I fall on the floor. <sighs> he's like, all right, good job. Good job. Little bit break. You do it again. <laughs> You, man. I don't pay for this is paying for torture. I don't want to do this. The break goes through starts the timer again I do it again at the end of it on the last pitch arc. I literally collapse five rounds in I get to the last pitch arc and I literally collapse my I like fall on the ground He's like, all right. He's like, all right, you're good. <laughs> hey, good workout today And I'm like, I can't even breathe. I slap his hand. Uh, he's like you good and I don't want to seem like a pussy <laughs> You know, i just did all the whole workout. I don't want to end it by looking like a fucking chode so he's like He's like, you're good. And I, I go and I just like, I use the last bit of energy in my body and I slap his hand. I slap his hand and I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, do you need help getting your car? You're good. You can walk. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and I like fucking hobble. I hobble to my fucking car. Now this one I'm going to need, I'm going to need paint to explain to you. By the way, I don't shower before the gym. I show up, I show up greasy already. And then I work out. And this is the most I've ever worked out in one session. So I'm I'm dripping sweat and I'm just greasy and I'm I'm I smell and I'm bad. I, it's like a pre-grease, post-grease. Wait, this is the gym and this is the parking lot and this is the highway. And there's like a little curb out here to like go out. Okay. So I walk from the gym door to my car, barely hobble. I hobble over to here. He's like from the window, like, are you good? You maybe you want to chill for a bit? I'm like, bad. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I'm good. Come for the pitch shark. That's no problem. Make it harder next time. The second I get in my car, I want to cry. I'm like, my, my legs are screaming. I am, I'm out of breath. My head is swimming, but I don't want to just sit there. He's looking, they're looking at me. This is an all glass window right here. And there was like nobody else in the gym that day. So it's like the trainer and the owner. And these guys are all just looking at me, making sure I'm all right. So I, I immediately just peel out. I peel out onto the highway. <laughs> This is where the story gets a dark turn. The second I get onto this highway, I realize I am not fit to drive. I'm not fit to drive at all. I, I, I cannot see. I'm like blind. Uh, I'm nearly unconscious. I'm like, I'm just like, so I peel out of the highway and I'm driving essentially blind. <laughs> like I, I, I just have no idea what's going on. I have no awareness. I want to vomit so bad. My head is just literally dizzy swimming. So I, I but I'm already out. I'm like, I can't turn around. I can't go back. And I'm already driving and there's cars zoom, zoom, going past me. So I realize <laughs> I got to get off the road quick. There's another highway going this way. So you can, you can go from this street to this street. There's a stop sign like right here without even looking if the light is right. I swear to God, this is, a, this is a, I'm admitting to a felony. <laughs> I pull up to this light. I don't know if it's red or green. I cannot even see. I just fucking flip. I don't see cars coming. I just flip the Yui. I just flip around. Okay, I don't. I, maybe it was green. Who knows? I I certainly do not. I did not know it was Jesus. Take the wheel. I flip around and there's a Walgreens here on right on this side of the street. This is where the Walgreens is. And I'm like, I saw it from here. I, I'm just my eyes are swimming. I'm like, I think it's that Walgreens. So I just go vroom, flip around and I peel over into the Walgreens. <laughs> this whole time, I'm crossing two streets with no vision. I get to the Walgreens. And I don't like, I don't even park. You know how there's, you know, you just, there's, there's parking spots with lines. I, I park across like three spaces. I just park sideways across three spaces <laughs> and I flip open the door. I don't even turn off my car. It's still idling. <laughs> I like spray vomit into the Walgreens parking lot. <laughs> and again, my hair is matted. It's greasy. My whole body is drenched in sweat, including my shirt. Blah! Just like all out in the Walgreens parking lot. Bear in mind the first part of this story. This is the very beginning of the pandemic. Tom Hanks just got COVID. Everyone is freaking out. If there's one thing you remember from the early days of the pandemic, it was the hoarding. Do you guys remember the hoarding? How everyone would go to the stores and buy paper towels and uh, Purell and all that stuff. So I flip the door open, I spray vomit, and I, uh, I finally get my senses back. 
and I look up and there's a mother and her son who have just emerged from Walgreens carrying almost every possible hoarding item. The mom has got like toilet paper rolls out the ass, paper towels, Purell. Her son is carrying stuff. This woman is clearly deeply afraid of the pandemic <laughs> and she has just begun to stock up. So I look up, I, I, I lock eyes with her. I look at her, I look at her son. I look at her, I look at her son. She looks at me and she is frozen like a deer in the headlights. She has clearly just seen patient zero. I am what happens when you get COVID and it is a zombie movie. It is a threat. It is a death. <laughs> I, I, am, I look like absolute death. I look like I'm about to die and I have just spray vomited everywhere at the Walgreens. She looks at me and she freezes. She can't say anything. Now I realize what's going on. I, I put it all together. After I threw up, I kind of got a bit of my senses back. And I'm like, I have to tell her. Wait, I have to explain. I have to explain. No, that's not what it looks like. It's the gym. So I raised my hand to say, ma'am, ma'am, wait, uh, let me explain. The second I open my mouth to say that, I throw up again. <laughs> ma'am, <blah. laughs> I looked her right in the eye and I threw up again, another time. And at that point, she audibly screams. The lady audibly screams like she has seen a fucking zombie movie and she grabs her son by the arm and she gets in the car and they leave. I don't get a chance to explain. I do not get a chance to explain what's going on. Oh, I just puked twice in her face. Then I, <laughs> I can't even say anything. So I hobble back into my car. I get back into my car. There's just there's just vomit all over the parking lot. I turn on the AC. Uh, my head is swimming. I feel so bad. All right, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something. I fling open my door again. Now I don't know who else saw me throw up, but I'm sure people are looking because I I look unwell. I get out of the car. I walk past my puke. <laughs> I walk into the front of the store, <laughs> no mask. This is the early days of the pandemic. I didn't really, you know, I didn't know the whole protocol yet. I walk up <laughs> to the cereal aisle. I buy a family size box of golden grams. <laughs> I walk up to the front <laughs> again, looking terrible. Yeah. I look around. Yeah. What you got, anyone got anything to say? And then I walk out. I open it right there on the way out. And I just walk back to my car, munching golden grams past my, my own puke, get in the car, drive home. Mwah. Magnificent. <laughs> and that was the beginning of COVID. That was COVID Mark 1. And I didn't catch it to this day. Until just about a week ago, I didn't catch it. All right? I survived. Despite looking like patient zero, I never actually got it. I have followed the protocols. Okay? The most important thing you do to stop being stop getting COVID is that be a gamer. If you're a gamer, you spend 99% of your time at your computer inside. Very hard to catch COVID. Until about a week ago, when I actually got COVID. Now, this story... <laughs> isn't as fun but i want to tell you about actually getting covid because <laughs> it's just a funny situation let me get a map of america here for you all right let's uh let me tell you about getting covid now so uh, again i have been totally healthy i've been totally fine if anything the pandemic's been good for me because i'm a gamer uh i like working from home i found out that i like streaming too i got a good side hobby so i can't complain on the whole I wish the pandemic didn't happen but in this world i can't be like complaining because really honestly it hasn't been that bad to me uh i live uh around here northern california no way i live over i live up here <laughs> wait where the fuck do i think i live i will tell you i don't want to like I'll, i live in northern california is that fine so i live in northern california and my plan is to drive to arizona for the holidays to see my family i have been desperately desperately wanting to see my family uh it's been a while uh i haven't got to see them very much during the pandemic and holidays are really important for me my mom gets super into them she hyper decorates the whole fa the family comes out i can see my brother if you guys remember from the end of last year I was pretty stressed. I was working a lot and I had to skip a lot of streams and I just felt like I really, really needed this. I needed to see my family. And plus, you know, maybe Slime might be there hanging out with my dad so I could see him too. So it would be good. And the plan was on Christmas Eve, around then, I would drive down here to SoCal. It's actually right here. <laughs> my geography is fucking terrible. I would drive down here to SoCal to see Stan's. Okay, I was gonna see Stan's, uh, spend the night at his place, and then do the rest of the journey because this journey overall was like twenty plus hours of driving. No, 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 never mind. Sorry, it's like it's like more like it's more like seven to here, eight to here. That's probably what it is. Seven to here, and fifteen total. Yep, it's like seven, seven and eight. Yeah, seven and eight, fifteen total. And so it's a lot of driving, a lot of driving. And so I, I like to break it up and do it over two days. We begin the journey. 
and Ari and I drive the seven hours down from NorCal to SoCal. Now here's the problem with this seven hour drive. It is Christmas Eve. The holiday traffic in California was designed by Satan himself to, t you know how God tests his strongest soldiers? Satan tests his weakest. <laughs> and I am Satan's weakest soldier. <laughs> I am a big baby. And so Satan has designed California traffic to test me, <laughs> a weak little baby, mentally broken. I'm already broken from having to work all the fucking time this past holiday. I wanna be there. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So what should be like a seven hour drive is more like nine and a half, 10. I mean, it really was so much slower. It was miserable traffic. We end up, instead of getting there like around eight, we get there at 1 a.m. We get there at 1 a.m. and Stans and his wife are already in bed. They left the door unlocked and they were just like, come in. I don't even get to see them. So we get there at 1 a.m. <clears throat> and I don't even get to see Stans or Rochelle. We literally just go straight to bed. This is where things take a turn from the worst though. <laughs> like that would be fine. But unfortunately, when we wake up at Stans' house the next morning, Ari is starting to feel bad. <laughs> Ari's like, hey, I don't, I feel sick. I don't feel well at all. Like I feel, I got aches and, well, first of all, Ari's double vaxxed and boosted. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, maybe it's a little travel. Maybe we didn't get good sleep. In my mind, I'm like, there. <laughs> There ain't no thing, okay? I, I'm immune to COVID. We didn't get it. We're, we're fine. But Ari's feeling a little sick. And Stans and Rochelle spend the morning with us. So they're talking to us. They're they're in the same room, hanging out, uh, fist bumping, you know, talking about the stream, saying what's up. The second, but we're like, you know what? We have to get on the road. I, we have to get there by Christmas. We have to go see my family by Christmas. So we leave. We leave that morning after hanging out with Stans and Rochelle. And the whole time in my mind, I'm like, man, if we do have it, we're just giving it to them, right? <laughs> like, wait, what? I, by the way, I feel fine. I feel 100%. I'm mad about the drive, but I, whatever, I feel fine. So I, in my mind, I'm like, you know what? There's no way she has it. Double vax and boosted. We're fine. On the way out, though, she's starting to feel worse. And she's like, we got to get a test. So in, in SoCal, we get a test. We get Ari a, a uh, COVID test. And then we drive. And on, Dece on 24th, December 24th night, we get to Arizona. And by this time, along this trip, she is starting to feel really bad <laughs> and we got the test. So <laughs> instead of going to my parents, I stop and we get a hotel. We get a hotel next to my parents on December, on Christmas Eve. So it's now Christmas Eve. I'm in Arizona. I want to see my family, but I can't. I'm, st I'm staying in a hotel. And when we wake up on Christmas morning, we get a gift from Santa. A little gift for his happy, good little boys and girls. A positive COVID test from this test. <laughs> in Ari's inbox. She's got it. She's full blown got COVID. That's what we wake up to on Christmas morning. <laughs> and so I immediately do some mental calculation and I'm like, well, if I've driven the entire way with her in this small car, I almost certainly have it. I still feel fine. I feel 100%. If we go and see my family, we almost certainly will spread it to them. There is no way we won't. And I cannot in good conscience spread COVID to my parents. If anything happened to them, if they had to go to the hospital or they had to get intubated or whatever, I would, it would haunt me for all my days. I cannot in good conscience give my parents COVID. It, it, I can't. So I call my parents. My mom immediately has a mental breakdown. <laughs> my mom has dressed up the entire house for Christmas. She wants everyone there. She wants me to be there so bad. The first thing she says is, I don't care if I get COVID. You better come. And I'm like, mom, there is no way you want to get COVID and you will get COVID. You will get it. And if anything bad happened, I would feel terrible. This is a very tough. And but she's like, no, you got to come. You got to come. So now it's even more stressful. My mom is like demanding that I put her and my dad in danger and, and get him COVID to come. So <laughs> I talk about it with Ari. Thankfully, crazily enough, but thankfully, my girlfriend, my, my, sorry, my brother's girlfriend, who's also going to be there, has a sick mom and absolutely will not come to Christmas, nor will he with because of her if there's anyone exposed with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no way on earth that my mom can get both of her sons and their their partners to Christmas. There's no way. My brother's girlfriend will not come if there is any COVID. So thankfully, my brother's girlfriend puts her foot down and there is no way to have both of us there. So I'm like, mom, you can't have us both anyway. And by the way, Ari is feeling miserable. And I'm like, you know what? Even if you don't get serious COVID, if you get what Ari has and she's double vaccine boosted, 
you're going to be miserable on Christmas. And that kind of convinces them too, because nobody wants to get stupid sick. <laughs> so my mom's like, all right, I guess we understand. You can, you can have to come. But what that means for us is after just doing a 20 plus hour drive in miserable traffic, <laughs> we have to immediately turn around and drive back with no stops because we can't go back to stanzas <laughs> and give him the COVID again. And, and Ari is feeling like absolute shit. She can't really drive. So I, the most miserable man on God's earth, have to turn around and drive back, <laughs> which I do. <laughs> So we drive all the way back <laughs> another 20 plus hours on Christmas day. This is my Christmas day. No, no hanging out with family, no gift openings. Just drive all the way back to NorCal. By the way, right as we're coming back, like right around here, as I'm getting close, I start to feel a little, <laughs> I thought for sure that I, I just wasn't going to get it or I had no symptoms. I had been telling my parents, that. I was like, Hey, <laughs> Ari's had COVID this whole drive down. If I feel fine, I'm not getting it. Whatever it is, I'm asymptomatic. I'm immune. I'm fine. The whole time in my mind, I'm like, you know what? This is great. I just, COVID doesn't affect me. <laughs> I just don't have, I'm asymptomatic for COVID. But right as I get home, I start to feel fucking bad. So we get in the door, we get in home. And by, and when I wake up the next day, December 26th, I got full blown COVID and I feel terrible. And I start to, I can't breathe. I can't smell. I can't taste. I have that thing where you lay down in bed, you feel freezing cold. You put on a blanket, you start sweating like absolute crazy, sweating through your sheets, sweating the pillows, take off the blanket, feel freezing cold again. By the way, I'm rubbing my face so much. I'm like, cause I started getting stressed. You know, it's been 20 hours. It's been like 40 hours of driving. My family's stressed cause they couldn't get to see him. I want to see him. The whole thing is just, and I just keep rubbing my head like this. Dude, look at this. I like, I had like fucking scabs. They're, they're like gone now, but I was rubbing my eyes so much that I, they're, it's gone now, but I was, it was bad, dude. It really, everything hit me all at once. It, I needed a break. And instead of getting a break, I got the worst fucking week of my life. But when I thought about it, when I thought about it, I realized when I got home, wait a minute, I just drove, you know, 40 hours round trip to give Stan's COVID. <laughs> All I did, the only humans I saw on this circle was fucking stands and that's the only humans I saw. I think that's all I did. All I did was special delivery COVID to my best man. What the fuck? And so he gets tested. Turns out, thank God, uh, they don't have it. They don't have it. But if they did, I would have felt awful forever because that's all we did. And then I start to get better. And I started to feel pretty better a few days ago. And now I was like, you know what? I want to stream again. And now I'm back, baby. Year of Atrioc. Oh, how did Ari get it? <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you. You know what? I'm changing my opinion on Spider-Man. Because Ari got COVID from Spider-Man. <laughs> I thought the movie was good. It turns out it's actually a super spreader movie. Spider-Man is a menace. J. Jonah Jameson was right. There was a guy next to her maskless in the theater. She was nervous about it. Turns out um, he was also in a Joker mask like me, which is weird. A Joker outfit. Sorry, not a mask. We just used face paint. And I, I dapped him up. Turns out he was, he had COVID. He's a spreader. <laughs> Ari got better pretty quickly. I did not. Spider-Man far from healthy. <laughs> anyway, that's my COVID stories. That's what happened. That, that's the holidays in a nutshell. But I am excited for 2022. I know it sounds shocking, but 2021 was kind of a bust. On the whole, on, on the day, kind of a whack year. And I think, I think we might have a better 22. Except for the fact there's definitely going to be a big market crash and inflation and more variants celebrity deaths <laughs>